Remember, her teacher, Kit, said, remember what you saw tonight from a true Japanese master. Self-control. Holding back emotion. Now, homework. Write a story that shows the relationship between two people. 1,500 words. Be delicate. No drama. And you, she said, looking at Abby and smiling. No dead bodies, please. Abby left the Vancouver Film School and walked quickly past the guys begging for change on Hastings Street. Her whole body felt light with excitement. She smiled when she thought about Kit's words. Yes, Abby thought, she could write thrillers. Dead bodies were no problem. Now, it was time to develop some new skills. She turned onto Dunsmuir Street and went towards the SkyTrain station, thinking about the film they'd watched in her screenwriting class that evening. It was Tokyo Story, by the Japanese director Ozu, made in 1953. It had always been one of Abby's favorite films, and it was wonderful to see it again. The acting was outstanding, she thought. Feelings were indicated powerfully by just a look, or a turn of the head, a handkerchief held in a hand. It was all very Japanese. As you watched it, you felt that it had a kind of universal truth. Yes, very Japanese. She had studied Japanese back in London, and a word came to her from the depths of her memory. Enryo. It meant calmness and self-control, or holding back. Yes, Tokyo's story showed Enryo all right. Nothing much seemed to happen. But by the end of the film, you felt you really knew the characters and cared deeply about them. Such a change from typical Hollywood films, thought Abby, as she ran up the steps to the SkyTrain station at Stadium. Abby stood and waited for the SkyTrain to Broadway. A bitter December wind blew down off the coastal mountains and through Stadium Station. She shivered and closed her warm winter jacket around her. She looked at her watch. It was 9.35. Ray would be on the Sky Train, and they would go home together to their apartment on Commercial Drive. They had decided not to use their four-wheel drive car in the city. It was hard to park, and the public transport system was good. Just two stops on the Sky Train and then the number 20 bus to their apartment. They always met up on the SkyTrain on Wednesday evenings and went home together. Abby went to her class, and Ray stayed at work late. He was a commercial lawyer, and his office was downtown. Abby looked at the mountains that surrounded the city. The snow sparkled in the moonlight, and here and there she could see the lights of the ski runs. Sometimes she just couldn't believe her luck living in Vancouver. It was simply beautiful. It had these fantastic mountains and an incredible coastline. At weekends, when Ray didn't have work to do, they could go skiing at Grouse Mountain or Whistler. But it wasn't just skiing and the outdoor lifestyle. It was also that Vancouver had so many opportunities for writers. They called it Hollywood North. The city was full of directors, producers, actors, and writers. Abby had known for some time that it was the right place to work on her screenwriting career. So when Ray's firm had wanted to transfer him to Vancouver six months ago, it had been a great opportunity. The clean white sky train arrived at the station. Abby got on and looked around for Ray. She found him right at the end of the train. He looked so English in his dark suit, so out of place somehow. He smiled thinly at her. He looked gray and tired. Now she thought about it. He always looked tired these days. Well, 
It was true that he had to work long hours at the office. She kissed him lightly on the cheek. Good day. Oh, it was all right, I suppose, he said, staring blankly ahead. Just too much work. The boss has just signed another contract, and I've got to go to Toronto next week. Ray's boss was always sending Ray to Toronto or Montreal on business. Oh, really, said Abby. Toronto. The excitement of her film class still burned inside her. The bearded man in the seat in front had turned round and was looking at Abby. Toonie was the Canadian word for a two-dollar piece. She looked at the man carefully. He looked sick. He was thin and gray, and his clothes and beard were dirty. She had seen the bus driver let him on the bus for free. The kindest drivers sometimes did that. Abby started to reach into her pocket for a two-dollar piece. Forget it, said Ray to the man. But the lady, forget the lady, said Ray firmly. Abby, don't. Abby looked at Ray. His cheeks were suddenly red. The man with the beard leaned towards Abby. His breath smelt bad. Listen, said Ray, losing his temper. Leave us alone. The man ignored him and just carried on moving his face towards Abby. Ray looked at her and shook his head. Let me get off, he shouted to the driver, who immediately opened the doors. She took a toonie out of her pocket and gave it to the bearded man. Why, thank you, miss, he said, smiling through his broken teeth. That's really kind of you. Abby nodded and stood waiting for the automatic doors to open. As she walked the two hundred meters to the apartment, Abby thought about Ray and reflected that the end is not always a big event. It can be slow and insistent, like waves on a rock. Until one day, the rock is no longer there. Well, she thought, at least Kit would be pleased. Not too much drama, certainly no dead bodies. Just fifteen hundred words. Exactly. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel to see the latest videos. Thank you.